Welcome to the Big Four County Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourCountyFirms.com. We have a great show today, but before we get to that, I wanted to remind you of a few things. We have two great books on Amazon that will help you get the Big Four job that you deserve, and I've included links to those books in the show notes. Additionally, I wanted to remind everyone to make sure that they subscribe to this podcast to stay up to date on the latest Big Four news and career tips. Also, make sure to share the show with a friend if you get a chance. Lastly, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I'll include links to all our social media in the show notes. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Today, we are going to be talking about another Big Four accounting firm that just released their revenue numbers. The Big Four accounting firm is Deloitte. They are the second Big Four firm to release revenue numbers this year behind ENY. Deloitte made their announcement on September 14, 2017. Ernst & Young released their numbers about a week ago, and we covered the details of ENY's release in a separate podcast. We'll include a link to that podcast in the show notes. Deloitte Global announced revenues of $38.8 billion for their fiscal year ended May 31, 2017. Now this represents a 7.1% revenue increase in local currency terms, or about a $2 billion increase from 2016, where they earned $36.8 billion. Now, in our EY podcast, we were wondering whether either Deloitte or PwC would break the $40 billion revenue mark this year. Unfortunately, it looks like Deloitte was not able to break $40 billion, so we'll have to wait to see how PwC performs. Now, last year, Deloitte was the highest earning Big Four firm. We'll have to see if it remains the same this year, but we'll have to wait for PwC's revenue numbers before we can see. Now let's put Deloitte's 2017 revenue number in context. Remember, Deloitte earned $38.8 billion this year, and let's compare that to Ernst & Young. Ernst & Young only made $31.4 billion. That's about a $7.4 billion difference. Now let's compare Deloitte's revenue to some other large companies that you might be familiar with. In 2016, Facebook, which is the largest social network in the world, earned $27.64 billion. So this shows that Deloitte's a very large company because they make more revenue than Facebook. It's about $10 billion more than Facebook. Now in 2016, Apple made $215.6 billion in revenue. That's significantly more than Deloitte. And Google made $89.5 billion. As you can see, Deloitte isn't the largest firm in the world, but... It's pretty close. Now to see how Deloitte would stack up in the Fortune 500, make sure to visit our Fortune 500 ranking page for Deloitte on our website. I'll include a link in the show notes. Now let's go to some comments that the Deloitte CEO made. The Deloitte CEO said, Deloitte's revenue growth is attributable to two factors. First, our multidisciplinary business model continues to be a source of competitive strength. Second, clients have choices And they are increasingly choosing Deloitte to help them navigate change and reinvent themselves in a constantly evolving global business environment. Now, that's what these CEOs always say. They always say that business is changing, the environment's changing, every company is changing. Now, that's not actually true, but if you're a consulting firm, you obviously want to say that and you want to market that as the current economy, that everything's changing and it's all super fast. Because that's how you make revenue. If firms are changing and adapting constantly, they're going to constantly need consultants to help them. And they're going to constantly need more contractors and people on site to help them implement new technology changes, new accounting changes, any kind of a change that Deloitte would be qualified to help with. Now let's go into the specific industries where Deloitte is achieving their revenue from. In 2017, those industries were technology, media, and telecommunications and consumer and industrial products. Each of those industries grew revenue over 9%. In addition, Deloitte's risk advisory practice grew their revenue at 12.9%. And this was primarily driven by increased recognition of risk as a strategic driver of performance. And risk advisory also achieved this growth through acquisitions in high growth areas such as cyber and innovative solutions in the areas of robotics, process automation, risk sensing, and predictive analytics. Now, Deloitte's consulting practice grew at 10.2%, and this was powered by the urgency of clients to accelerate their business model transformation in disrupted markets. And they also grew their consulting practice through acquisitions, alliances, and investments 
in areas such as artificial intelligence, robotics, cognitive, creative digital consulting, cloud computing, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Next up is the tax practice. Deloitte grew their tax practice by 6.6%, and this is fueled by various needs of their clients, including OECD's BEPS, or Basis Erosion and Profit Sharing Effort. Tax practice was also helped out by investments in technology such as automation and mass globalization. Next up is financial advisory. Now this only grew at about 5.8%, and this was driven by M&A activity and also Deloitte's forensic service line, which has been recognized for leadership in e-discovery investigations and dispute analysis and advisory. And financial advisory was also helped by regional growth in China and the Asian Pacific network of Deloitte. Now the last practice is audit and assurance, and here the revenue growth was not so good. It only grew by 1%. And this just speaks to the big four accounting firms. You know, the bread and butter of the audit practices just aren't growing. Clients aren't seeing the value in the audits that the big four are conducting, so they're not willing to pay more. Clients are seeing that things like automation and machine learning can do a job just about as well as an auditor or that by clients adopting automation, that takes out a lot of the risk and therefore they don't need to pay their auditors more. And you can see revenue growth in the audit and assurance practices of these accounting firms going down every year where these other consulting and analytics types practices keep growing at double-digit rates. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for a job at the Big Four or you're looking to switch groups at the Big Four. Now let's go over the regions of Deloitte and how those grew. Asia-Pacific region for Deloitte grew the fastest at about 9%, and that was followed by their Europe, Middle East, and Africa region at 8.6%. And lastly, the Americas region grew at 5.6%. Another thing that the accounting firms release in their revenue press releases are the ways that they are making their money and the cool things they are doing to make this money. Now, the interesting stuff that they mention is usually just in its infancy, but it's usually a good sign of what's to come in the accounting industry. So I wanted to go over a few key service offerings that Deloitte mentions. First up is some of their new exotic audit solutions. And what they said is Deloitte is deploying world-class global solutions in audit and assurance, including Magnia, its audit delivery platform, Illumnia, its analytics platform, and Cognia, its portal equipping audit and assurance professionals with innovative tools and approaches which leverage cutting edge advancements in cloud, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Deloitte is also adopting ValueD, Ideal, D3 Discovery, and financial crime analytics platforms across a financial advisory practice to support clients with new levels of insight and experience in order to help them solve complex business problems. In addition, Deloitte is developing integrated cloud-based solutions that, among other things, will leverage advanced machine learning techniques, natural language processing, and graph-based algorithms on big data to enable cognitive and predictive capabilities. Another thing that Deloitte mentioned in their press release is that they're developing a global network of cyber intelligence centers to offer solutions that help clients protect business assets and enhance their security posture, while proactively detecting, responding, and recovering from security events to become secure, vigilant, and resilient. And these cyber intelligence centers operate around the clock, 365 days a year, to provide fully customizable, industry-aligned, managed security solutions, including advanced security event monitoring, threat analytics, cyber threat management, and incident response, for businesses to meet their increasing market demand in cybersecurity services. So those are some of the service offerings they speak about in their press release as to why their revenue is growing so much. They obviously want to attribute it all to technology, but they don't really give the percentage of their revenue growth that is due directly to technology. This area of their press releases where they speak about the technology and all the great things they're doing for their clients is marketing, and it's also recruiting. It's marketing for their clients to let them know all their capabilities and it shows off the full depth of knowledge of the firm. But it's also good to, sh to have this information out there for college students looking to go to Deloitte to see, wow, Deloitte really has a lot of cool things they're working on and that makes me want to go work there. So that's why they include that area. It is another area they like to speak about, which we mentioned in our EY Revenue podcast last week, is they like to talk about their addition of talent in their revenue reporting press releases as well. And I'll include a link to our Ernst & Young podcast in the show notes, so I'll make sure to check that out. So let's get to the part where they talk about talent. And as far as talent goes, Deloitte increased its workforce 
in all geographic regions and businesses. And they did this by adding nearly 70,000 new professionals, which represents an increase of 8% from last year. And this is the equivalent of one person hired every eight minutes. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. And with those new hires, this brings their headcount to 264,000 people across the globe. Now that's pretty astonishing. And another thing the big four like to brag about in these press releases is everything they're doing for their talent. And this is mainly used for recruiting purposes, but let's go over a couple of things that they're doing. In 2017, Deloitte opened their doors to their fifth and sixth Deloitte University locations. Deloitte University North, which is located in Toronto, Canada, and Deloitte University Asia Pacific, which is located in Singapore. And in 2017, 65,000 Deloitte professionals participated in leadership development programs at Deloitte University. Another thing that Deloitte did for their employees in 2017 is they expanded their family leave policies across the Deloitte network to help professionals balance their personal and professional lives. And we previously covered this in a post on our website, which I'll include in the show notes as well. Deloitte is dedicated to providing market-leading family leave policies across the world, and examples of this include UK shared parental leave, which gives eligible parents the option to share a period of the maternity or adoption leave with their partner. And Deloitte US expanded its family leave policy and now offers up to 16 weeks of fully paid extended family leave to eligible male and female employees to support a range of life events. And this is what I'm talking about where we, we discussed this previously on our site. So make sure to check out that link in the show notes. Another thing that Deloitte did for their employees is they launched a new strengths-based performance management experience. And this focuses on further developing strengths, which are in areas where team members feel creative, innovative, and insightful. And they did this by developing strengths through ongoing feedback and development that drives both individuals and teams. In conclusion, it was a good year for Deloitte as they are nearing the $40 billion revenue mark. They were the largest accounting firm in revenue last year. Will they retain that spot this year? We'll have to wait for PwC's revenue numbers to find out. PwC should be releasing their revenue numbers fairly soon in order to figure out whether Deloitte retains that number one spot and to keep up with Big Four revenue news, you need to make sure to subscribe to this podcast and visit our website, bigfouraccountingfirms.com. It would also be great if you could share this podcast with a friend. That's all we have for today. Thanks for listening.